Hey, it's Noah from American Trucks, and what I have here in front of me is the K&N Series 77 High Flow Performance Cold Air Intake for the 15 and newer 3.5 liter EcoBoost F-150. Now, this intake is going to be the perfect choice for an F-150 owner who's looking to really let that 3.5 liter breathe easy and pick up some more power with all that restriction from the factory intake system out of the window. Really the goal with any aftermarket intake is going to be deleting that restriction the stock one comes with right from the factory. Those restrictions will suppress noise, they'll ruin your throttle response, horsepower, and torque. And this K&N intake does a great job of freeing up that cold air and funneling it right into your engine with nothing holding that airflow back. So without any restrictions, silencers, or baffles, air is free to move to your engine faster, resulting in a happier spooling turbo and overall a more enjoyable drive driving experience. So right out of the box, you are protected from smaller particulates floating around the engine bay. This filter is also reusable, so when this guy gets dirty, you can just pull it off, wash it, and re-oil it, and then put it right back on rather than buying a whole nother filter. The intake is constructed from lightweight mandrel bent aluminum tubing. That means this intake is resilient to engine bay temperatures unlike regular steel tubing would be, but it's still sturdy enough to resist cracking or warping because of the engine bay heat. Now aluminum is known to dissipate heat faster than steel, so this should also help keep those IATs down and prevent heat soak, which is especially important on a boosted truck. You also get a 1 million mile 10 year warranty on this thing, which is kind of incredible seriously talk about standing by your product now let's talk price K&N's cold air intake comes in right around the $450 mark that puts this intake right around the middle of the price range and just about on par with a lot of other intake options out there but I will say that K&N has made a serious name for themselves in the world of intakes and filters. So considering the brand and the quality you get for that middle ground price, I'd say this is a pretty decent option to consider for an EcoBoost owner. All the parts you need to install this intake are included with the kit, like the boots, the clamps, all the fittings you need. This intake is a bolt-on job, but it is going to require a little bit of mechanical skill, putting the install at two out of three wrenches of difficulty, and I'd say it's safe to count on spending around an hour on it. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to one of our AT customers who's gonna walk you through that install process step-by-step. Step. The tools I use for this install, uh, simply you can just use a flathead screwdriver and a cutter for your gasket. I, you did see me use the impact driver. I've got this on the lowest speed setting though, and I have some adapters here. For your factory clamps, you're gonna use a seven millimeter socket, and for your K&N clamps, you're gonna use an eight millimeter socket. Uh, I've got the box knife here just as well to help cut some of that gasket, uh, but overall, pretty simple setup. Okay, so our first step is going to be to remove this IAT electrical sensor. To do that, there's a little tab in here that you actually need to lift up with your flathead screwdriver and then it's going to spin out of place. A little hard to see. Once you lift that tab up, you'll see that it will spin and then you can pull that right out. Your second step is going to be to loosen these three hose clamps. So there's got one, two, and then three. This third one's down there pretty far back and it's got a couple sensors here in the way. So that's where my, uh, my flexible adapter here is actually gonna come pretty handy. Let's go and loosen these. And that third one is down here. I can just feel it, so I'm gonna guide and guide this in with my hand. Just might have to come around the back way here. So now that those clamps loosened, we can actually remove these clips that are on your box. And let's go ahead and lift that up and out of the way. All right, there we go. Now I got some freedom. All right, and there's just a loom here that's clipped into the back of that, that tube. So let's go and pull that off as well. All right, so we're back over at the workbench now. We just need to do a little pre-assembly here. We've got some rubber gasket trim that's gonna go around this heat shield box. And what this does is it uh, 
creates a seal between your hood and, and the box here so that you're only pulling in cold air, not that hot engine air. I usually like to start these from one end and then kind of meet in a corner. So let's go ahead and do that. You are gonna have a little left over. So just try to make a good secure connection as you're going around. Got a couple tight turns to make it through. So you can see the that gasket will make the turn. You gotta just work with it a little bit until you get it to cover. There's some overlapping metal here, so it can be a little finicky. Okay, coming in for that home stretch here. Now it's a pretty cold day here, so this, this rubber is gonna be pretty constricted. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it to um, where it's meeting up because I know it's only gonna expand from there and I can always trim it back later on. So let me grab an knife and do that. So I'm gonna pull this corner back a little bit just so I can really get this one all the way up to where I want it to be. And again, leave yourself a little bit of slack here. You don't wanna cut too much and then have a little air, air leak in your box. So make that cut and go from there. All right, so right tool for the right job here. Just got some straight metal cutters. Do any sort of angled end here. I finished cutting through that gasket. Awesome. I'm gonna flip my box back over. Now, good tight fit right in that corner there between the two ends. Good seal. All right, so our next step is going to be to put our air filter inside of our heat box. So to do that, I'm going to lift up, come from below, and then there's just a couple clamps here. Slide those back over the end. And these are just loosely fitting. They're going to just sort of hold it in place for now. Um, we'll tighten those down as we assemble it. All right, we're back under the hood where we left that IAT sensor. Now we actually need to remove the electrical components apart from one another here. So if you can see where there's a little slot, there's actually a point where we can push in quite hard here and it will just come out. Um, we're gonna go install this in one of the tubes of the new intake. Okay, so your next step is you wanna get the tube that's gonna go over to your passenger side. Whenever you look at them installed, this one here curls back and stays more on the driver's side intake. Um, but this one has a hole in it and we're gonna take the grommet that came in the kit and put that in that hole. Uh, there's slots inside of there and so we can just kind of feed that onto the side of the metal here. Uh, no real technique, just a little bit of squishing and it'll, it'll seat into place. And now we're gonna add our IAT sensor into that. Now this is a, this is a pretty fragile component so be careful as you're handling this, uh, but we're just gonna get it shoved into that grommet. I'm gonna wiggle it back and forth being careful with it until we get it to seat down to that blue ring. Actually here, just spinning a little bit. It's getting it to progress a little easier. And we're just seated down there now. Now I've got it in this orientation. If you can see, the clip is taped into a certain orientation. So this is gonna make it easiest for the clip to get back on there. So we're back under, under the engine here and we're gonna take two of the small hose clamps that came in your box, as well as the straight coupler and attach it to your passenger side turbo intake here. So I'm going to go and slide one coupler on and then kind of ease that onto the intake here. It's a rubber on plastic component so pretty easy to work with. You'll notice I've got my my clamp here facing me. I want it to be easy to access that later on. Moving over to the driver's side inlet, we're gonna do similar with this step-down coupler, uh, bigger side going towards the intake. Easy as that. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take out the, the factory filter now that we have the air box removed and just put that aside. And take our new filter, which does have some little tabs you need to line up here. In the back. Okay. 
slide that into place. It should sit, sit snugly and your factory clamps here are going to clip onto either side. Next we're going to install the actual inlet tubes, but first I'm going to tighten up these clamps that are on the truck side just so they're not moving around on us when we're trying to slide those in. So nothing, nothing too tight here. Just want them snug enough to stay in place. And then I'm also going to tighten this here because I don't want this to fall out on me uh, while I'm working on the other clamp. So I'm ready to install my inlet tube. This is your passenger side uh, turbo intake and your IAT sensor is going to go on the side towards the box here. I'm going to put it in the box first. I tried this a few times and I found that that actually is working a little bit easier for me. I got it pretty well seated in there. I'm gonna come back over to the straight coupler. See if we can get these to come together. Next, we're gonna install the driver side. Pretty similar to last time. Just need to get them in these couplings. And we'll tighten everything down. Just a little and tighten down to hold it on. You can see this is why I like to use the drill or driver just for these kind of quick adjustments on these clamps. It's a whole lot easier than trying to crank it down with the screwdriver. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the other couplings now. Be ready for the next step. Last thing we need to do here is to connect our IAT sensor. Now you'll see here in this uh, 22 F-150 trimmer that plenty of space, but if you need a little more length, they do come with a pigtail extension as well. Rotate this back around, click it on, and we're good to go. Okay, last step per k in is let's get that sticker with some branding out and stick it on this front tube. Looks like there might be a little plastic film on there. I'm just gonna leave it for protection. All right, let's go and start up the truck. Make sure everything sounds okay. That was my take on the K&N Series 77 high flow performance cold air intake for the 15 and newer 3.5 liter EcoBoost F-150. This intake is available on our site along with tons of other upgrades for your truck. So for all things F-150, remember to keep it right here at americantrucks.com.